James L. Knight Foundation, helping NPR advance journalistic excellence in the digital age. And by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, making grants to solve social and environmental problems at home and around the world. On the web at Hewlett.org. This is NPR. Saving the last member of an Amazon tribe, the story of a lone Indian in southwestern Brazil, and how a team of experts ventured deep into the rainforest to find and protect him. The Diane Rehm Show, next hour. And we have a report for, um, from the Associated Press that General McChrystal has met with President Obama and that he has left the White House before a war planning meeting. What does that say to you, Michael O'Hanlon? If it's true, it doesn't bode well. So we'll wait to hear more. James? Oh, I agree. If that's true, it does not bode well. You'd want to have him at that war meeting not only to answer questions about his comments, but to talk about what, what are the next steps forward. So you think he's gone? I think if that report is true, then he's probably gone. Je uh, I was about to promote you, Colonel McGregor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think he's out of a job. You do. Okay. We shall wait to hear. Let's go now to... Fort Wayne, Indiana. Good morning, Tim. You're on the air. Hi, Dan. I'd like to say that I love your show and listen to it all the time. Thank you. I have a small comment to make about uh, uh, the war in Afghanistan. I, I just recently returned from uh, Afghanistan, and what I've noticed over there is that uh, it takes often a long time to build relationships with the people that you work with and trust on a daily basis over there. I also wanted to say that, uh, you know, there was a recommendation that, you know, we send a, a few generals over there and they can uh, get an honest assessment of what McChrystal thinks, you know, is this the truth or is this not the truth? And I got to tell you, nobody's going to speak to the truth to a general. If there's things that are going on that are uh, displeasing to the soldiers over there, you know, the comment was just made that, you know, and the, you don't speak up and say what you think. And uh, a soldier who's on the ground fighting that war, day to day, living in the living in the uh, uh, less than conditions and things like that, they may say, "Yeah, we need this and we need that," but they're not going to honestly tell a five-star general or a three-star general or two-star general what they think about their command and how the war is being handled over there. Tell me, why would they go ahead? I was just going to ask you, tell me about your service there. Uh, I had a, I had great service over there. I would say that I was able to build meaningful and lasting relationships with the Afghans that I worked with. I think that they are very motivated and, and loving people, and I think that the uh, uh, the comments about the, the fighting force of the Taliban and Al Qaeda over there are very minimal. I, I absolutely agree. I think that the difficulty that the people are going to have. Uh, in Afghanistan is finding a sustainable economy that mm. uh, doesn't involve mm. some more of the illicit things that we've experienced. Tim, thanks for your service. Colonel McGregor. Well, your caller's remarkable because the overwhelming majority of the soldiers, sergeants, lieutenants, and captains that have to work closely with the Afghans do not share his enthusiasm for the Afghans. And I think this is one of the serious problems we have. We don't understand that we're bringing in people from a, a modern society and introducing them to an extremely traditional or backward one. And that doesn't breed mutual respect, love, and understanding. And that's one of the problems when you bring in large numbers of conventional troops. It was never a good idea. And uh, I think now what we need to do is reassess and look at what we can achieve and attain. But I think we need to get out of this nation-building business in Afghanistan. And I think that's part of the frustration over there, that we're, we're pursuing goals that are really not aligned with what's important. First of all, the Taliban doesn't have any connection to al-Qaeda. No Afghan in the Taliban has committed a terrorist act against the United States or Europe. The Pashtun tribesmen who, who are part of that fight you because you're in their territory. You're fighting people who are fighting you because you're there, not because they're Islamist terrorists. 
We need to come to terms with this and, and take a look at what we should and should not do there. James Kidfield. On the issue of, uh, you know, are the troops telling General McChrystal himself that what they see is the truth? I mean, there was, it hasn't gotten any at- attention in this recent furor, but there was an interesting part of that Rolling Stone article where he actually got a lot of blowback from young enlisted and, and sergeants on the front lines who were very upset about his uh, restraint in using air power now because he's trying to minimize casu- civilian casualties, which is, you know, on a strategic level, good for a counterinsurgency operation, but for the guy who life he may be putting sure. on the line, it's, it's pretty unpopular. And they were very out front in telling him, and it was, a very, it was a very uncomfortable passage where, you know, they were, he tried to explain himself and they were just not buying it. So I think, I think he, I think generals in the field can get a pretty honest assessment from their frontline troops. That's been my experience. All right. Next step is Troy. He's in Islip, New York. Good morning. You're on the air. Hello, yes. I was wondering, you know, when I was spent 21 years in the military, speaking the truth was always encouraged. I mean, you couldn't like, lie about your commander, but if you spoke the honest truth, you know, a lot of times there was nothing they could do about it. And no one's looking as if the stuff he's saying was true or not. And there's so many worse things going on over there. They just got caught paying off some tribal place, you know, some warlords. There's contract afford galore. Money's disappearing, you know. There's so many more things going on, I think. That's my comment. Thanks for calling, Michael. Well, this does get to the uh, broader issue of where we are in the strategy. And uh, I think, let me just say two very quick things, uh, which don't point overall in one direction or the other. I think the training and improvement of the Afghan army is going far better under McChrystal than it ever had before for a number of reasons. We've basically doubled pay. The Afghan parliament doubled, but we're, of course, paying uh, the bill. But that encourages people to stay. We have now partnered with 85% of all Afghan units. What I mean by that is sending a NATO unit to work, deploy, train, and do everything else alongside of them. So they're constantly in this apprenticeship kind of relationship. Whereas in the past, we gave them a few weeks of basic training, sent them off on their own, and hoped for the best. This is one of McChrystal's signature uh, ideas, and it is going much better. So the Afghan army is going much better. The Afghan police is not yet going better. And corruption in general is not yet being addressed nearly as well as it needs to be. The Afghan army is effectively a Tajik army with a few Uzbeks. There are no, almost no Pashtun whatsoever in it or associated with it. It's not true. We've got to go back and understand the constituent peoples that live in this country. The Pashtun, the Uzbeks, the Tajiks, and the Hazara have lived in the past in loose confederation. This is not a nation state. The Pashtun regard the Tajiks and Uzbeks and Afghan uniform that come into their territory as foreign as we are. They all universally detest, distrust the the central government. Karzai is sitting on top of a narco state. It's no secret. And hundreds of millions of dollars are disappearing into various bank accounts in Dubai and the Cayman Islands. This is one of the reasons that Eikenberry was so critical of of Karzai. We've already lost billions in Iraq. We're losing more money now. The corruption is beyond American comprehension. Pouring more resources, more people into this sort of thing is a disaster. I would just say um, on the the truth that the article points to, and again, it's not the most uh, it's not the most well reasoned article in terms of giving both sides. But the truth it points to is there is a fractured. Uh, civil military team in Afghanistan between Richard Holbrook, the special envoy, between Carl Eikenberry, between General McChrystal, and between the Afghan government. And that, that's not good. That is not good, and that's, and that's something we did not see between uh, General Petraeus and Ambassador Crocker in Iraq during the surge. There was no way to find light between them, and this does point to a potentially uh, devastating lack of coordination in our own civil military team in, in country, and that in between that team back in Washington, and maybe if there's any silver lining Obama gets, if, if Michelle McChrystal does go, that, that he can address this issue and tell everyone to start, you know, stop the petty backbiting, get on the same page, or else. If McChrystal is out, who is likely to go in? Michael. Well, Diane, I, I need to very quickly comment on this previous point, because the image of the U.S. leadership that's been painted by all the coverage is somehow of Eikenberry and McChrystal and others just Hold constantly breath. undercutting each other. That is not what I have seen. They, they do not have a warm, fuzzy relationship. That is fair. 
and they have said things about each other that have not been ideal. That is also true. However, I have never seen them try to undercut each other in policy terms. So this is a professional group of people that's been trying to make the best of a situation in which they have big disagreements. Now, now this latest episode has been very regrettable because it's a time when I would have hoped things would begin to heal. And so I'm quite critical of General McChrystal for the timing of this as much as anything else. It's a huge mistake at a very bad time. Uh, but I don't think it's correct to have the image of the American leadership as sort of almost undercutting each other uh, as an active act of policy. And who might replace General McChrystal if he is 